all you channel animals. Um, today is going to be such a good day. We are making a special route and way to bring fuel oil on board to Yankee. Normally, it's delivered by sea um, in a ship that comes and brings us our winter supply of fuel for our heating system. Um, but he's working up on the Hudson and won't be able to get down in time before the snows fly. So we're on our own in how to get um, fuel into the big tank below decks. And it's a big job carrying those big heavy five gallon jugs up the gangplank, down the deck, around the corner, and lifting them and getting them down into the hole. So I thought there's got to be a better way. And I've had so much fun thinking of what it'll be. So. Um, we'll kind of explain it as we go. I'll, maybe I'll give you a quick overview. The idea is that we back the truck up with three jugs, which is what we have, of fuel oil. We have three five-gallon jugs. And then, hopefully, we'll, we'll hang uh, lines off the top deck with carabiners on them or some kind of a hook that can swing out to the truck, hook on to the three um, jugs, and I can lower them down so I don't have to lift them off the back of the truck. Everything to save time and energy, <laughs> I guess. And then we'll, we're making a little tiny cart right now with leftover, everything is what we have around. We actually, we're looking for a piece of plywood and this is exactly the right size already, <laughs> just by nature. And the shape, the length of it, everything is perfect. So we're gonna put these little um, casters on the bottom and we're gonna put these boards right here, if you see them, these are uh, just decking boards, and we're going to put those on both sides of the gangplank so that this little cart, because these are swivel wheels and that's all we had uh, in our wheel department here on Yankee, um, we don't want it to swivel off. So we'll have these boards on either side which will guide it like a channel. And then at the, at the top of the gangplank here in the vestibule, we're going to have a pulley system with a counterweight. So we'll be able to hook the, uh, the hook from that into each jug, pull the counter counterweight, which is much easier than lifting a jug, up into the big basket on wheels that we have, which you'll see. And each one will be aiming out the slats of the, of the uh, basket. And, and we'll have a rope that will pull it down the deck with a guide rope behind and around the corner. And then, we're going to put siphon hoses in each one and siphon it into a big funnel and down it goes without lifting them up and out and upside down. <laughs> and then the whole thing goes in reverse, back into the truck and off to fetch more fuel. So that's the idea. <laughs> Dashing off to get the fuel.
so excited. It's kind of working. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Just to help for protection purposes, we'll keep it where all three of them are pointing in the same direction. We're emptying into the tank. Okay, here we go. Slide off. I'm not actually lifting anything. It's just doing it by itself. And look how easy. Look at that, would you? But I think I'll go, oh, wait, I have to go now into the basket. And this guy just goes up and finds his place up here again. That is amazing. I just wanna make sure this is strong enough, sturdy enough. <laughs> Okay, stay. <laughs> All right. And there we go. Slide it down. And off we go. This work has been hard work. It hasn't been as hard as the year before. And I, I just wanted to keep my spirits up, even though there were many, many gallons yet to go. I think we only had maybe 100 gallons by the end of a couple of weeks, <laughs> and we needed to get so many more. And, um, but I, I didn't want to get discouraged, or I would have maybe lost my courage. So I kept um, high-spirited about it, but one day, I, I had a start because Richard came as I was working on this and he said, Victoria, um, why don't we call and see if a land pro uh, provider of fuel could come and bring fuel to Yankee? And my first knee jerk at, um, thought was uh, kind of a mix probably of, of pride and wanting to keep my courage up um, was, oh no, we've called about that before in the past and it's never been possible because of fuel regulations and this and that. And actually looking back, I realize probably the most reason why people couldn't deliver by fuel is that their lines weren't long enough because we were so inaccessible on piers that were um, dilapidated for vehicles to come upon. But anyway, I didn't think of that at the moment. What really came to me was to be still again, just be still again. Even in the midst of tiny steps forward, we have to always have the humility to be still and to listen. That's how we hear the advanced idea. And, you know, another thing came to mind, right, while Richard brought that up, and that is the word ego came to thought. Because ego can be a, a bad thing in both directions. Sometimes an ego can make us feel um, that it, it has puffed us up to the point where we can't even see what's around us. And sometimes it can be deflating, where we, we feel that we haven't been able to, um, uh, to, to do anything good for the world. Like, oh, what is this little tiny act of survival to do with anybody? You know, here we are doing this, and sometimes I think about it my back and forth and back and forth trips. Oh, what is this doing for mankind? What is it really doing to progress society? And how is it really giving? And sometimes that's a kind of ego right there because it might be that you are well intended, but is it trying to attach itself to me? And we must never let me get in the way, either in a puffed up way or in a deflated way because that's always the wrong uh, uh, location for ego. Ego 
is all in God's hands. And it just, just keeps um, leading and, and opening the way. So I stopped and I was still and I thought I must listen to what Richard has said. So I got on the phone and called a company and they said, oh, we service the, the area where you are all the time, all the shipyards along there along the, the Richmond Terrace. And we thought, oh, well, this is so easy. And so here came this truck. And even though, um, you know, moments before that, I was kind of protective of the hard work I'd put into. You know, it's that sense of putting so much labor into something that it has to be valuable. But maybe the putting of the labor in is, is simply an exercise that we have to go through in order to get to the the more advanced idea. So I had to let go of all that and see the victory was in this new fresh idea. And when I saw the dial on that uh, fuel truck, you know, going and just um, adding up the gallons within seconds, I thought, oh my word, here we are. And within 30 minutes, all of our fuel was supplied and it would have been weeks and weeks and weeks of this process that I had developed to get to that point. And though it was a step further, it wasn't necessarily the last step. I'm so grateful for what I'm learning along the way. And I'm seeing that these exercises that are shared are a blessing to others. In fact, the man that delivered the fuel said, oh my goodness, um, I am so impressed with all the things that you have done. He said, my days are usually rather ho-hum and regular, but this day has shown me how your inspiration and your need to make uh, this work has, is, is such a, it's such a great example of going and, and saying, okay, let's just um, find our way. And he just loved it. He couldn't wait to go home to his family and to his firm to show them his fuel for thought for the day. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye.